In this lecture, I'm going to talk about populations and sampling, how researchers select cases for analysis in their studies. The basic idea of populations and sampling is that sociologists seek to gain knowledge about a group of people, and that group of people is referred to as the population. Once you've kind of identified a population, you, you may sort of go out and observe to talk and to some of these people. So when you observe and talk to some of these people, those people um, that you talk to are uh, represent the sample. So it's sort of the cases that you selected for your analysis. And then based on your observations and your interviews with those people, you might um, find, um, make a sort of a, a set of generalizations which you use to um, extend back to the entire group of people, back to that population. And this process is referred to generalization. So uh, when we say that researchers generalize their findings to a population, we're talking about um, finding a, a set of results in a sample and then um, extending those findings back to the population. Um, so one example of this idea of populations and sampling is if the researcher was interested in studying people from New York City. And um, so the New York City residents represented the population. And then the researcher might speak to uh, one or more residents of this population. And based on findings from those interviews, the researcher would um, make a set of generalizations about New York City residents that um, uh, based on that sample of people. And so they, they would sort of make generalizations uh, from the New York City residents that they interviewed and generalize those findings back to um, the entire group of New York City residents. Um, so you take this population, you identify cases from the population, which is your sample, and then you, based on those results, you um, make inferences about the larger population, and then that's generalization. Sampling is important for a few different reasons. First, it's impossible to observe all relevant events and people of interest. Um, populations are usually very large uh, groups, and um, within those populations there's a lot of variability in characteristics. Um, and so it's usually not possible to study all relevant um, events and people of interest. So usually you have to select cases from that larger population. But the challenge of selecting cases is that there's a lot of variability between cases. And so how you select cases um, for analysis is really important because of um, substantial variability. People, cities, and states vary widely in their characteristics. So how you select them makes a big difference in potentially the, the findings that you discover through your analysis. And so because populations are usually large, um, there's usually, that places a lot of restrictions um, on the researcher in terms of cost, accessibility. Populations can usually not be studied in entirety. Um, and, and finally, perhaps the most important um, uh, reason for why you might uh, sample from a population is that a, a carefully selected sample can produce reliable and valid population estimates. So it's not um, it's not all, all the all the time necessary to study the whole population. It can be more efficient to select uh, to carefully um, select as carefully and systematically select a subset of people who are representative of the population, and it can be quicker and more efficient and a lot less expensive to just study a sample from that population, so which can produce equally reliable and valid estimates. One of the first steps in sampling is sort of defining who your population is, the group of people that you're interested in studying. So a population refers to the total membership of people, objects, or events that the researcher is interested in. Once you've identified that population, the next, the next um, step is developing your target population. The target population is the group of people to which the researcher will generalize their findings. Um, so it's maybe the specific, it's a little bit, usually a little bit more specific. It might specify um, a particular age group. Um, a time period. Um, the s sampling frame is basically a list of cases um, from that target population from which a sample is selected. 
And once um, characteristics of populations are called parameters, so parameters of a population might include the percentage of women or the average age of a population. Once a sample is selected, estimates of those population parameters are then called statistics or sample statistics. One example of the process of selecting and identifying a, um, a population for sampling is the National Longitudinal Study of Adolescent to Adult Health, also known as Ad Health. In this study, the population that the researchers were interested in learning more about were U.S. adolescents. Um, but that's a very broad group, so they, um, they were able to sort of whittle down their um, population to a specific targeted group. Their target population were U.S. adolescents who were in grades 7 to 12 during the 1994 to 95 school year. So it represents a specific, more specific group, a time period in which um, the adolescents were coming through the schools. And from that target population, they, were, they, select, they um, selected a sampling frame based on a database that they obtained from an educational organization, Quality Education Data. Um, that contained a list of U.S. schools because basically a list of all adolescents is not um, feasible or available. And so to sort of construct um, a sampling frame, they had to turn to a list of schools from which U.S. adolescents could be identified. Sampling designs refer to how how the researcher goes about selecting cases for a study. And there are two broad classes of sampling designs. The first is probability sampling methods, which include the process of random selection. Random selection is what distinguishes probability sampling from non-probability sampling. And probability sampling uses random selection, and each case in the population has an equal chance of being selected for a study. That's kind of an important characteristic of probability sampling, is that random selection piece. And that's different from non-probability sampling, where um, there are processes of selection, so cases are selected for the sample in ways that are other than random, based on the researcher's um, um, exper expertise or convenience. Types of probability sampling methods include simple random sampling, um, in which um, every combination of cases has an equal chance of being included in the study, in the sample. It's the most straightforward uh, method of um, probability sampling. So a simple random sampling is a sample of cases in which every possible combination of cases has an equal chance of being included in the study. That's a little bit different than stratified random sampling, in which the researcher first subdivides their population into two or more mutually exclusive segments, which are called strata. Um, and then samples are drawn from each of those strata. Um, an example might be if the researcher was interested in racial and ethnic identification in relation to some sort of outcome. The researcher might stratify their sample according to race and ethnicity, um, drawing uh, samples from within groups of whites, um, African Americans, Hispanics, or Asians. Um, so the researcher might sort of divide um, their population into these strata and select cases from within those strata. Clusters, uh, cluster sampling breaks down a population into groups of cases, which are called clusters, which consist of these natural groupings from which cases can be selected. Um, one example of the clustered sampling design is the Ad Health study, this National Longitudinal Study of Adolescent to Adult Health. So the, I mentioned earlier that the researchers obtained a list of schools, and these schools um, represented the clusters from which adolescent, adolescents were selected. They chose schools, they figured schools were the best place to screen respondents because they were very interested in um, adolescents' peer relationships, and most of the peers that adolescents had were also located in those same schools. So schools seemed sort of like a natural um, clusters from which to select um, adolescents for this study. A second example of a, um, a stratified uh, sampling design is the National Health and Aging Trends Study. Um, in this study, the researchers, their target population were Medicare beneficiaries age 65 and older, 
who were living in the 48 contiguous uh, United States. And there were, um, they, they used a three-stage sampling design. Their primary sampling unit were counties within the United States. And from these counties, um, they selected zip codes. Um, zip codes were the secondary sampling units. So the zip codes within these counties uh, were selected. And then from within those zip codes, they identified Medicare beneficiaries. So this was like a three-stage sampling design for a large national study designed to make generalizations about um, older Medicare beneficiaries in the U.S. Non-probability sampling is a little bit different than random sampling. Um, so in non-probability sampling methods, the researcher is selecting cases for analysis in ways that are other than random. And some of these ways include convenience sampling, purpose of sampling, and snowball sampling. Convenience sampling, um, sometimes also referred to as haphazard or fortuitous sampling, is when a sample of cases is selected based on just their, uh, that these cases are conveniently available to the researcher. Purpose of sampling is a little bit different, and the researcher relies on some type of expert judgment to select cases that are representative or typical of the population. And finally, snowball sampling is where the researcher uses kind of a system of chain referral, um, where members of the target population are asked to provide names of other members that the researcher then reaches out to, to um, try and uh, interview those people. Snowball sampling is, a, is really um, good when you have a difficult or hard to reach population. And one example of that is um, a study by the sociologist Rachel Sherman, um, who published her research in the book on Easy Street. And she was interested in um, wealthy New Yorkers. Um, and she, she wanted to identify a sample of 50 affluent New Yorkers. New Yorkers who had incomes um, upwards of one, two or more million dollars. And so that can be, there aren't, it, it can be difficult to identify and um, interview um, million, million people with large um, monetary assets. So she relied um, on her personal networks as well as kind of a snowball sample where when she identified um, maybe a, a case, um, an affluent New Yorker, she, um, she used the, her sample to sort of help her refer her to other wealthy New Yorkers that she could then um, interview for her research. So, you know, one wealthy New Yorker led to another in her sample. And from, from that process of chain referral or the snowball sample, she was able to build um, a relatively large uh, sample for a qualitative research study, 50 affluent New Yorkers. Um, and she used these interviews, um, which included uh, of people um, who were financiers and corporate lawyers, to really examine, um, provide in-depth understanding of their lifestyles and how they viewed uh, and understood their sense of privilege.